let's go ahead and get started with the atomizer for the Shopify challenge. We're going to double click and open our folder. If you haven't already extracted it, if your folder is zipped, make sure that you unzip this folder. You do not want to work on it while it's zipped up. All right, we're going to start from this file right here. If I go view large icons, I can see what it is. If it doesn't automatically open in Photoshop, you can right click, open with Photoshop and it will automatically open there. I'm going to go ahead and close out of any files that I'm working on because this, this file system can be pretty intense and you want to be able to use the full uh, Photoshop resources. So we can start from any design here. I'm going to start with the 13 by 19 design. I'll double click on the mock-up here double click on the 13 by 19 shirt and I'm going to start with the background the background is going to uh, consist of the same background that's going to fill up the all over shirts and some of the background of the all over products all right and the first thing I'm going to do is change out the color so color number one is here I'm going to go to my order form for the customer and I'm going to see what color number one is on the order form. And it will be in the form of a hex code. And as a matter of fact, you can see here a visual representation of it. But we can get the actual hex code that the customer picked by double clicking here, copying that code, and double click on the swatch, paste the code. We'll go ahead and do the same thing for color number two while that's updating. Let's grab color number two, copy it, and let's go ahead and replace color number two here. Now we can close out of this and hit yes to save. All right, and if the, the bottom color is not as intense as you want to be or maybe it's too dark you can double click on the levels here and you can change the midtones you can change the highlight here for the lightest value and the darkest value and that way you can get your desired effect of how deep you want the color to be and also how much contrast you want so just changing the levels there does that I'll go ahead and close out of this and hit yes to save so the background saved next we're going to work on the foreground and I'm going to go back to my reference sheet here my summary and I'm just going to see what the reference image is it looks like it's a photo that was provided by the customer and I'll just go over to my folder and I can see that this is the template that was selected and this is the image that they provided so keep that in mind I'm going to go into the foreground here change out the foreground photo I'll turn off my existing layer or sometimes you can turn it on to see where the placement is going and I'm going to drag and drop from my folder right onto the desktop here and because this is in a square shape I am actually going to clip this down to the image below and turn on this layer mask here Now with this design, let's check and see what the text is and see if we're going to recreate the text at the bottom. We'll go back to our summary here and let's check on what the text is. It's going to say Thompson Family Reunion. Killing Texas 2023. So we're going to come down here to copy that text. We do not want to hand type it. So I'm going to take the word Thompson here, copy it. 
And here I can go ahead and save this image by closing out, hitting yes to save. And I'm going to go ahead and proceed to edit the text here. So I'll start with the top text, double click on the text one. Make sure that I right click and update all modified content so that the colors that we just chose update here. Uh, perfect. And now I'm going to go ahead and double click on the words O shift. And this is going to be, I believe, a three liner. Yep, so it's going to be Thompson Family Reunion. So I'm going to choose one that has three lines here. I'll choose this one. Text number one, double click. Let's just paste the word Thompson. The second text is going to be family. Double click on the T, paste family. And third line is going to be reunion. Paste reunion. Now I'll go ahead and close out of this and save it. Now I have Thompson Family Reunion all together. I'll hit uh, Control S to save, or you can close out and then save it. And that will be the top of the text here. Next, I'll go ahead and start editing the bottom text. Come back to my summary sheet, and I'm going to copy and paste city and state and even the year. Same steps, I'll just paste over the content there. Copy, double click on the T, and paste. Oops, I did not copy. All right, so everything has been updated on the text. We can close out of this and then hit save. And then I'm going to right click in the gray area, update all modified content. And our colors are updated now to close out of this and hit yes to save. It will update in my foreground. All right, and because I have so much text going on, I'm probably going to reduce the size of this text just a little bit. And then I'll move the photo up a tad bit. Right, and that design is done and ready to go. Uh, personally, I feel like if the Texas was on the end here and the 2023 was at the bottom, it would look better. However, the customer did specify what they wanted on each line of text. So if I deviate from that, I have to be willing for somebody to come back and say, hey, no, that's not what I wanted. Change it. So I'm going to provide it as is. So let's go ahead and save it. And then when I close out of this one, you can actually choose here if you want the background to kind of be offset from the image. And it is slightly offset. I'm going to hit save here. You can 
And there's our final design on the t-shirt. Again, we hit save. And that is one piece saved. Now I will go into the other products. Let's go with the all over, double click. Go ahead and open up that image. At this point, I just right click on the gray area of the layers and it has to be the layer of one of the linked objects. So I right click, update all modified content. And now this becomes an all over design. I can close out, hit yes to save. And this one, it looks like I need to bring it up just a little bit. It's a little low because it's a very tall design here. So I am going to pull it up a little bit. Yes to save. All right, that's better. Let's close this out and hit yes to save and it will propagate on my stage here. And let's go ahead and do the same thing with the tumbler. Double click, right click, update all modified content. Anytime I see the exclamation point, I want to do update all modified content so it just doesn't do that single layer. And then I can close out of this, hit yes to save. Close out of this one, hit yes to save. And these become print ready files as well as mock up files at the same time. Let's double click on the tag here. Same deal. Double click on the image. Right click, update all modified content. Close out and hit yes to save. And we can go ahead and save this one and that would be our final piece of the mock-up here. Now I want to save these uh, to be able to use on the website and also to be able to prove to the customer. So the main thing I'm going to do, and of course you can put your logo in here if you double click here, you can place your logo inside of here and it will make it 3D on the back area here. But I'm just turning it off for the sake of creating these mock-ups. I'll go File, Export, click Export as PNG. And this one's going in my 1071 folder. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and make a folder of my PNG. So I'll place them here, right click new folder, and I'm just going to name this folder PNG right now. And because this is an order I'm working on actively, I'm going to put 1071 in front, dash, and then a space. Let's save it. And that's going to save this entire artboard, including the gray background here. Next, I'm going to take just this individual folder, right click, click export as PNG. And same thing, I'm going to put the 1071 dash in space. So I know that this is the PNG image of this order for this particular product set. Now for these, I'm not going to right click and save as a PNG just here. The reason why I'm going to open it up is because I wanted to save the extra space around it so that it always appears as a square inside of Shopify as my product mockup. Otherwise, it will be cut short and it'll just have that narrow space um, from left to right. And the problem is when I have different products of different widths and heights, it looks very, very odd on your Shopify store. So if you keep everything clean, whether it be a rectangular or a square uh, dimension, 
you'll be able to let all of your product listings look uniform. So from here, I'm not going to come on this side. I'm going to go File, Export. Oops, Quick Export as PNG. Quick Export as PNG. Okay, and again, the very beginning, I'm just going to rename this 1071 dash space. And the reason why I'm saving these individual uh, PNGs is so that I have product listing photos. So that was one. Here's two. File, export, quick export as PNG. And we have the 13 by 19. File, export, quick export as PNG. 1071 dash space. Double click here. File. Export. Quick export is PNG. 1071 dash space. And now I should have a total of six images that I can use to upload as product images in my Shopify store. We will also use these for the banner later on. Now what I'll do is I'll show you the folder structure for how I'm going to save all of this. And let's go back here. You'll notice that my preview image has changed here for the stage. I have the associated links here. What I want to do is I want to preserve this for later. So I'm going to take this one and this one, and I'm going to right click, compress to zip file. And this will allow this to be an automizer that I can kind of put on the shelf and if I need to make edits to it, I can unzip it and rework it. However, if you have a bunch of automizer files that are all open, sometimes your links can uh, get crossed up. But if it's zipped up, you don't have to worry about them getting crossed up. They'll stay in one neat package and you can unpack it when you need to use it. Let's say this design is done, ready to go. Then I would be able to print from the, uh, the print versions of the file. So if I click here, I can show you that these are the print sizes, print ready files. And that's your print ready file for your 13 by 19. And these are mock-ups. So if you keep everything together, then you're able to go back and reference this, reprint, and then also make changes if you need to make changes. Right, so that's how that goes. Now I'm going to get ready to um, to make my banners. So I will show you that in the next step.